Whether you celebrate Christmas or not, the holiday season brings many families and friends together, bonding over hot cocoa in front of a fireplace, binging Hallmark Channel movies, and just barely avoiding a fight because Uncle Jack decided to bring up politics at dinner again. After an exhausting time with the family, most of us just want to sit down and dive into whatever new game we got from under the tree. As for me, I've completed the impossible act of playing all my games already, so I'm just going to talk about one instead. The Earthbound community is famously known for its unique ways to make the game replayable, including unique ROM hacks that change it into a whole new experience. In this case, let's take a look at the tool assisted speedrun of Holiday Hex, a festive take on the Earthbound experience. A tool assisted speedrunner by the name of Chatterbox completed this task in just 12 minutes and 36 seconds, and I'm going to explain how he did it. The game starts in the small town of Bethel, which looks suspiciously close to Onet, but just covered in snow. You're introduced to Tina, the main character in the story, and she's very excited about Christmas. So she runs downstairs and is told she's delusional and that it's still the day before Christmas. Her best friend Kyle barges in and reaffirms that fact, mentioning his parents believing it was Christmas Eve and all the presents being gone. After putting two and two together, Tina deduces that this is the plot of a fairly popular movie from the 90s and that they're stuck in a time loop. To fix this time loop, they decide to wander around town aimlessly until they run into a police officer who is trying to figure out why the decorations on the massive Christmas tree in the middle of town are missing. The party decides to help, and using her Christmas spidey sense, she hones in on one of the locals' houses and we see the first instance of speedrun tech being used in the game. If you were paying attention, you may have noticed it, but Shatterbox opened and closed the menu quickly to do something called RNG manipulation. If this isn't your first time watching this channel, then you know what's coming. Newcomers, check this out. Most Super Nintendo RPG speedruns have some form of memory manipulation, and Earthbound is no exception to this rule. There are three separate values that runners manipulate. We'll call those RNG1, RNG2, and RNG3. 1 and 2 are actively advanced by NPC movement, text scrolling on screen, cursor movements, and more. RNG3 is updated thanks to crossing through 64x64 64 64 pixel grids in the game, among several other ways, and is directly affected by what values RNG1 and RNG2 are. RNG3 also can control enemy spawns, item drops, damage rolls, and more. Chatterbox will be using this to take out bosses as fast as possible later on. Now that we're done talking about that and 50% of you have clicked off the video, we'll go back to the run where Tina convinced the man who had the lights for the town's tree to return them from whence they came. Trying to find more info on what's going on, the gang heads up to the drugstore to ask the clerks if they've seen anything, and a shady looking fellow drops a step-by-step -step booklet on how to ruin Christmas. Tina goes to read it, and it says, Subscribe to Dr. Swellman on YouTube. Huh. Weird. Anyways, she finds out that the grunt was supposed to go out and get food, so some group could wait out the awful holiday. This note also includes steps to get back to the base, which Tina and Kyle will use a little later. They leave the drugstore and go to another person's house to return a set of ornaments a lady decided to use as earrings. I don't have a witty comment for this one, but personally I wouldn't want massive balls hanging from my ears. After narrowly avoiding demonetization, Chatterbox goes to the nearest trash can and picks up the fruitcake that was used to threaten Uncle Jack into leaving the family dinner early. Heading north towards the base that was mentioned in the note, Chatterbox does more RNG manipulation to prevent any encounters from happening and goes into the spooky looking cavern. After narrowly avoiding death from the local wildlife, the gang heads further into the cave and finds a really old fruitcake in a gift box. The duo finally find the shady man from the drugstore. They call him weird, and thanks to some anger management issues, he starts throwing punches at the party. With that, we fight the lowly grunt, our first encounter of the run. To explain the madness that is about to happen, we'll have to look at how RNG mechanics work in battle. In the normal game's encounters, RNG1 and RNG2 are the only things being advanced, with RNG3 being where it was before going into the battle. The way speedrunners advance RNG1 and 2 in battle comes down to cursor movements, pressing B to reload the menu, going in and out of other menus, and selecting offensive equipment in the inventory to make the character use it and attack. In Holiday Hex, it also seems as if some RNG values 
are advancing when the enemy is highlighted for your attack, so Chatterbox will have to wait for the right time to do just that. With all of that out of the way, let's see how he handles this fight. After five turns, the lowly grunt is defeated, and for some reason, he drops a box of marshmallow peeps. In the post-battle scene, he realizes how embarrassing it is to be beat up by a group of kids and proceeds to flee deeper into the cave. As the gang travels deeper, they come across more people who they decide not to talk to because they smell like they haven't showered in weeks. But there's one person who looks pretty cleaned up in the back. He's losing his mind at the fact that he lost the key to his boss's room and it's being guarded by a vicious creature. After taking no time to think about their own mortality in this situation, Chatterbox rushes in and takes on the Vorpal Rabbit, whose fight is a huge step up in difficulty compared to the Lowly Grunt. And Chatterbox's strategy is going to mostly use Kyle's freeze ability to solidify the rabbit, along with constant smashes from Tina. The battle takes about a minute, so jam out to the banger that is this boss's music and see how he does it. After winning, the Vorpal Rabbit drops a cream egg, and I'm sure you're starting to see a pattern here. You see, we're not actually playing Holiday Hex, we're really playing the Fairly Odd Parents Christmas special released on December 9th, 2001. That means the true final boss of the game is actually the Easter Bunny. Since this is an Earthbound hack, we need a weird plot device and a name for the boss, so here's Spencer, and his favorite holiday is actually Easter. The party tries to take the star back from him, but he summons his Omega hair to take them out. This fight is about 2 minutes long, so let's take a look at how Chatterbox handles this and regroup after.
A fun fact here, thanks to RNG manipulation, we never see one of the hare's attacks, which is him literally breathing fire and hitting the entire party for ridiculous damage. After defeating the hare, Spencer throws a temper tantrum and tells the kids to get out of his room. So they yoink the star and take it back to the center of Bethel to restore the tree to its former glory. After a life lesson about not doing good deeds just for the attention, the kids go to sleep and the next morning comes. To her pleasant surprise, the gifts are under the tree and all is well with the jolly holiday. Thank you for watching my explanation of this obscure hack. I left a link to the original footage in the description. Also, if you like the content and want to support me creating more videos, consider subscribing and leaving a like on the video. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers as of the upload of this video, so if we can reach that number, I would greatly appreciate that. Enjoy your holidays and stay hydrated, folks.